Hello everybody and welcome to Vice Man channel and as you see today we have an honored guest it's not even in uh, Europe that little fella is way down under and his name is Evil Damon say hi Evil hey how you going I'm doing fine uh, it's like one of his days you get home and of all the last days I was on a beach it was 34 degrees heat and now i'm home and it's negative six and or below six and it's like yes iceman is back freezing his ball, balls off no <laughs> how is it down under 29 degrees in my office alone oh it's been a peak of 35 all day it's great i am so envious so tell us a little bit about yourself you how does evil become evil daemon? Uh, not much to say. I got interested in computers when I was young. Started breaking stuff because I was interested in how it works. Found out people pay you money to do that and just kept doing it. Isn't that strange? Turned out it a, yeah, I know. People are paying me to do things that I enjoy. It's amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these days I work for a company that does, you know, not RFID hacking on the day to day, but I do web security. So it's a fun little, fun little life. So what do you work with them? Is that, that's because that's how we started to know each other. Yeah. So I get to do fun stuff like uh, hardware hacking most of the time and uh, web hacking. And you're quite good at us, uh, you know, if I say so myself. Yeah. Eh, eh. Okay, so Evil is from Australia down under. How do you get your name Evil? Where, where's that one from? Funnily enough, I used to play Warcraft 3 as a kid and I needed a name to kind of put in there. Up until then I used the same name that I've played on for years because it was just easy to remember and I just wanted, oh, I need a cool name. I accidentally misspelled Demon. And then when I got into InfoSec, I switched the A and the E around and it sounded great. Evil Damon to the background process. So, perfect. <laughs> it is actually perfect. Everything is great. Well, they can follow you on Twitter as well and all that stuff. Um, and he's a friendly fucker. Now, the reason why he's here today, he wanted to do a little video, is about some findings he's done. So, you were actually in Sydney weren't you like you know a week ago doing stuff and before that you were talking to me and i see something in your background there that reminds me about what we were talking about back uh, some weeks ago so what do you have there behind of you uh i found out that you can just buy pack systems so i just bought one so i bought an access controller bought a pile of readers bought pretty much everything under the sun I could to make it useful. And I enjoy training people more than most. So I get to teach people fun security stuff. Most of the time it's lock picking it besides Perth, which is the, and to, I wish this was a joke, the most isolated major city with a population above a hundred thousand. It takes me five hours to fly to the next major city. Jesus. And on the plus side, it takes me three hours to fly to Bali. It's great. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, it's ups and downs. So 100,000, you have a B-Sides Perf, and you were doing some PAX training there, or you were setting well, up? Well, I usually do lockpicking and physical security as a whole. So lockpicking, tamper evidence, a little bit of CTF stuff every once in a while. And this year I decided I'm going to make mini doors so people can actually have a chance to poke and have fun at things. Because your choices to do it otherwise are you know, become a red team or a pen tester who gets authorized to do it or commit a crime. But, you know, I prefer to offer another option, which is safe option. Um, yeah. I've seen stuff like that before because in Red Team Alliance they had a door simulator that basically is a reader that you know gives you display ups. But you hooked it up to the lock and everything like that. So it's uh, I also for another job I had, they had have these doors with you know with control on it. But yours uh, were a little bit more module. I think you had a board also. Yeah. So the fun part is I'm gonna have to pull back here just to prove it's not a green screen. Each of the readers are fully uh, removable and you can connect up any reader that you need to it. So it's just connected to a little box, a little bit of ethernet connecting everything up. 
means that you can switch out readers on the fly and offer different options. So right now, this is just a Signo with a standard profile, and if I whack that on there, means I can use it. For people who don't know what a Signo is, it's uh, one of HID readers, and that's what he's having in his hand as well. And then this is the easiest way to store them. It's Velcro on the back, makes life easy. It means you can go from a hardware-only CIOS uh, reader for the, I believe this is iClass. Um, they call it the Multipass SE, but they just brand it HID, all the way to weird readers that are definitely white labeled and the cheapest one I could find on AliExpress that read e um, EM tags. <laughs> So you go both uh, low frequency and high frequency there? That's awesome. I think that's a very neat setup. That's one of the reasons I wanted you to be on my show to, and you know show that stuff because it's really neat. I like it. And, and for people who practice things like myself, I have tons of stuff laying around, but you have order in your chaos. I don't. <laughs> oh, trust me, there's no order. There's a reason why it's specifically focused in this little video area. <laughs> If I zoom it out any further, it becomes chaos. <laughs> oh, well, at least it looks good. <laughs> so I thought you were in Sydney as well, doing a training. Yeah, so I was over in Sydney just teaching some basic training um, regarding physical bypassing. So the running joke is I suck at lock picking. I, I actually am okay at lock picking. I, I pick through every lock in my collection before every conference, but I, I just don't like doing it. Physical bypasses are way more fun, and it's more of a wow factor for people, uh, especially clients who go, wow, I didn't know I could just get into here with a milk, uh, plastic milk jug that's being cut up. Um, and then the other side of it was PAX. So I wanted to just not do RFID, but the full ecosystem, because everyone just sits there going, oh, I can crack m uh, my fair 1K cards on my phone, and I usually just say, but what is the what's going on in the background? What's actually happening? Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah. It's like the wow factor is there. I I just came back from Black Hat Middle East uh, Africa and uh, we demoed uh, Chameleon Ultra, Proxmox, and uh, Flipper Zero. It's like you know here, uh, clone a card and was my first classic with default keys. You know it goes like very fast, and but it opens one of those simple uh, AliExpress locks like beep, you know, and. The idea of saying that you think it's safe and secure, and it's like, ah, oh, maybe it's not. Yeah, well, it was a cheap system. However, you have standard systems that is industry standard, and that is installed everywhere. Uh, some of these readers you have from HID are there. It's also installed on airports and all the other places. So it's uh, some more serious things. So Evil here was doing his training, and I think it's great. I think he and I will do some collab about trainings in Europe as well. And it's because he's a good egg, and I like him. <laughs> now, another reason why we have this little conversation is actually your findings when you do that, because you being the hack you are, and you're quite a good hacker, uh, you also find something new stuff. And I wanted you to have a chance to talk about it instead of you know you making your pull request and then you know mention it briefly on the Discord. I find it better that you know that you might want to talk about a little bit what you found. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little bit weird. I was. I was actually poking around in downgrade attack on CEOS because I, I figured why not go for the hardest stuff that's currently available. Um, and just started poking around and trying to see what happened. And I was just whacking cards on a reader to see what output it. And at some point I switched the UID around on a standard MyFair Gen 1A. And turns out that it was the readers were interpreting the um, UID as a card number and facility number for some reason. Yeah, that's which very I, odd to me. <laughs> I mean, I know the CSN mode, which is like you just and type uh, you you encode the UID into the system or you enroll it, but uh, you made it as PAX payload the UID. I'm like, huh. yeah, that's that was a little bit weird. I've never seen it and. The weird part is, it, it's why I'm kind of enjoying hacking RFID at the moment. Um, HID released a bunch of these newer style ones with a reader manager, which has some beautiful functionality to switch out configuration that you normally wouldn't have easily done. You'd have to go for a configuration card, you have to call up a company, ask them to supply it to you, and then you have to figure out all the permissions layers from that. 
Now it's just on the fly, I can switch it over as needed. So breaking it down, it looks like for some reason, generic 14, 4, or 3A, I think it's called. Yep. Except the UID, same with MyFair, classic CSN, not the SIO profile, which is weird that they made a distinction on that. I've got to, I've got to dig into that. That's a weird one. And then, uh, yeah, the MyFair Classic the CSN as well, which the fun part is most of these newer installations I'm seeing, at least wandering around um, in Perth, Australia, I'm seeing people not buying CEOS only readers. I'm seeing them buy only smart card readers, which are just high frequency cards, including MyFair. Yeah. So there's a good chance that this will just work on a lot of facilities that would normally disable procs because everyone think from most of the people I see who install procs, they just say, no, 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 we don't install it anymore. It's insecure, but we install the high frequency ones. That way we can go down in the future. It's more money it's saying that you use high frequency cards instead of low frequency and the procs is obsolete and dead and all that we want to say. And the installer goes like, yeah, let's go for a high frequency and it's secure. And uh, all of a sudden, if, it's default installed like you show there, then uh, that's going to be an issue. I like it. I loved it. And um, it didn't stop there, did it now? You did something more. Yeah, so I suck at coding. And I'll be honest, like the best thing I know how to code in is PowerShell, and that should say everything. I enjoy the fact that object-oriented scripting languages exist. <laughs> But ChatGPT also exists. So I just dropped <laughs> in roughly what I wanted in Python and then converted it to Lua. Yes, yeah, so you and did a Lua script. Yeah. So is that one on the GitHub yet or when will it be there? I mean, I'll dump it on once we're done with this. Uh, it's actually kind of okay. I, it's mostly adapted from a different uh, HFMF sim for HID, which I was looking into because I, oh, HID sim, maybe this is doing exactly what I'm thinking about. Because I spent ages trying to figure out how it was doing the encoding. For some reason, it's when you encode it, it's doing the facility number first and then it's uh, reversing the bytes and doing a base 16 to encode it, which is wild. And I've got no idea on why it's doing that. But yeah, you can pretty easily just dump it through this and it will give you the output that you just need to run for uh, run to get it on your card. It will also give you the simulator if you don't want to run around with the card. But most of the time I find having a props mark hanging off your belt will arouse some suspicion. I'm pretty sure that, you know, just days after this video going to go live, that there will be a flipper app doing this stuff. <laughs> I'm just pretty sure of it. I'm so sorry. It's, uh, it's, that's just one of the reasons why I wanted you to be on the show and talk about this before so you can get your credits. <laughs> and, uh, the Flipper apps usually has a tendency to never to give uh, you know, open source code uh, offers the proper attribution. <laughs> hey, look, if they want to try and figure out how terrible lower scripts work and then convert it, all to them, I'm happy for that. Shut you to be, man. <laughs> all day long. Yeah, it's a, it's really interesting. So this one is a wiped MyFair. So if I'm right, won't work. And obviously we've got the CEOS card over here. I'll just quickly demo writing it. So same card here. We'll dump that through with a C set UID. This one's just for the same UID as this. Funnily enough, if you've got the demo script, you've got the uh, the card number and facility number for this one. Oh man. There we go. That's so smooth. That's why we have a door, because it's satisfying to open it. It is, actually. It, it proves a point. It pushes the point to it. So you can see it. Then you can slam it together. <laughs> yeah. It's great. You get to. Except it wobbles that cheap table I've got it sitting on at the moment. <laughs> So what uh, Evil Yas did, which we didn't see, is he used the Lua script running on his Proxmark and uh, set the UID on that MyFair Classic Generation 1A card. And according to his findings, um, took the CEO's packs data out of it and put it there instead and open the lock. That's basically what he did, which I found super interesting. 
and I find it super interesting because I haven't seen it before. I've seen the CSN mode, uh, UID mode, but not this. So uh, it's going to be an interesting part, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to add it, that functionality to the sim in the native client sooner or later. Uh, but first, you know, uh, see what happens. It's going to make a little fuzz about this in the RFID hacking Discord, I'm pretty sure. Uh, where some are going to say, I've seen this before, and then the rest of them are going to oh my I'm, god. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just looking forward to having something there. Like, at the end of the day, most people don't get how this works, and I'm just trying to figure it out as I go. Hacking together scripts that work like this is fine by me. Mainly I did this because I couldn't figure out how to encode iClass uh, credentials with a facility number and site number with a generic key. My fares something I know because I've been using it since high school. It was on my public transport communication system. Yeah. Well, you're curious and you know, you solve it the way you want to solve it and you are successful. I think it's amazing. It it's also shows following your progress because I've seen you from when you started with PAX journey a couple of weeks ago. It's also so fun to see how you fell down the rabbit hole <laughs> in adding one thing and doing more and building the doors and, you know, uh, adding the Velcro thing and then, you know, making the whole thing. And it's like now you're doing Lua scripts and I think it's just beautiful in that sense. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that people get to enjoy it. <laughs> I know. If you want to try this out at a conference, I'll be around at some of the Australian conferences, leaving doors around, apparently. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, we can find you on Twitter, I guess. And then um, otherwise, I think you hang out somewhat in the RFID hacking Discord, maybe. Where? Do you have a YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah, I'm that. If you want to find me, at me, because I have too many Discords and too many Slacks and too many random signal groups full of people I barely remember who I hung out with. Yeah. yeah. So, I just downloaded another uh, uh, message app on my phone. I'm like, I don't want another one. That's the end of the story. With that said, thank you so much for joining and talking about this stuff. And I hope it goes all well for you. Oh, thank you. And you too. Awesome.